Hello, I'm Izzy Jane and I am the person behind the ink and thread. I wanted to share my classics collection today, but I have a little too many to type up and put pictures of. So I thought I'd make a video even though I don't really like myself in video. Um, and I'm doing a speaking again, don't like it, but when I'm watching videos, I prefer when they're talking. So here we are. So I'm gonna go by sets and then I will do the ones that don't fit into a set. So the first set I have is these, um, the collector's library. They normally come with covers. I take the covers off because my covers were from different editions of it so they don't all match. So mine, I take the covers off so they're just red. So they're not super uh, different <laughs> in between each one, but I think they're very pretty. So first I have all my Jane Austens in this set. Um, so I've got Emma Persuasion, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park, um, Northanger Abbey, and Sense and Sensibility. So I have all of those. Very fun to read. And they're nice because they're so small. So uh, this is Emma, which is her biggest, and I can throw it in my purse. Uh, I also, in this edition, have uh, Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Another nice one to have in a small edition. On the topic of Jane Austen, I do also have a mini set. Um, I have the vintage classic edition of Emma, as well as the edition of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Um, I'm hoping to build this. The next one on my list, I think, to get is Persuasion. Um, but I do actually want to get all the Jane Austens in this edition as well, because I just think they're so pretty. And these are fun. The outside cover um, is the outside cover. And the inside cover is the outside cover to another book, which makes the outside the inside to another book. That's very confusing. Um, but if you look here, you can see the outside of um, Emma is this one, but then the inside of Emma is the outside of Northanger Abbey. So they switch in between, and it's the same for the Virginia Wolves. Very fun. And rounding out my pretty books versus just generic books is the Penguin English Library Edition. So the ones with the orange spine. I love these books. I love the symbolism of the covers. So I have, I haven't read all of them. Um, but I have Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte, uh, Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities, also Charles Dickens, Howard's End, Ian Forster, North and South, Elizabeth Gaskell, and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. And all of these covers um, are symbolic of what's happening in the story. So the outside, for example, of North and South is spools of thread because the book takes place in a thread factory. Or uh, the whole story kicks off in Howard's End with an umbrella. So there's umbrellas and umbrella stands. So they all mean something to the story, which I love. Another book that kind of falls into that um, edition is this one. I have Bleak House by Charles Dickens. These are the hardback versions, so they're slightly different, um, but they have the same basic design style um, and purpose. So I do also have Bleak House. Next up are just the plain old black and white Penguin classics. So in this edition, I have The Crucible by Arthur Miller, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, What Maisie Knew by Henry James, and Daisy Miller by Henry James. Uh, the only one I haven't read is What Maisie Knew, so we'll see. I like the other one. The last set of books that I have are the uh, Barnes and Noble classics. So in this one, I have Portrait of a Lady by Henry James, which as you can see, I'm in the midst of. Not very far, but we'll get there eventually. I have Vanity Fair, another giant one. This one, they're almost the same size, but these the font on this one is so small. It's going to take forever. I have Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I have Ethan Frome and Selected Stories by Edith Wharton. I have read none of these yet. Um, and then I do have two books by Willa Cather. I have My Antonia and P O Pioneers. Um, in this edition, and then I do own the third. So this is technically a trilogy. They don't, they're not interconnected stories, but it's called the Great Plains Trilogy. So I have these two in the Barnes & Noble Classic, and then I also own Song of the Lark in the Vintage Classics. So I would like to someday get it in this one so they all match. I have read My Antonia and Song of the Lark, and I am partway through O Pioneers. Love them all. Very good books. I just remembered one more set. I do also have these. These are the, they're put out by Barnes & Noble. Um, what are they? I don't know what their technical title is, but they're very beautiful and um, they're almost square shaped. This is Wind in the Willows and this is Peter Pan um, and they're all kids books. They've got gorgeous foiling. I don't know if you can tell it's got the gold foiling and then the um, end pages are always really fun and the illustrations inside are really, really beautiful. So I very much love both of these um, favorite books and favorite covers, um, they're just really fun fun, beautiful things to flip through. That's my favorite illustration. They're great.
From here, I have the rest of my children's classics, which is uh, rather large. So we'll start off. Uh, I have Dear Enemy by Jean Webster. This is the sequel to Daddy Long Legs. Long story short, didn't love Daddy Long Legs, got rid of that, but still have the sequel because I haven't read it yet, and it's a pretty book. I have Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. The Doll House, uh, The Doll's House by Rumor Godden. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I have Good Old Winnie the Pooh. So I have Winnie the Pooh, Now We Are Six, and When We Were Very Young, all by A.A. A. Milne. I have E. Nesbitt's The Story of the Treasure Seekers, Pollyanna by Eleanor H. Porter, and The Rescuers by Marjorie Sharp. As you can see, I'm making two stacks of books because I'm running out of room. Um, Ballet Shoes by Noel Str Strutfield. I do also have party shoes and skating shoes, but this is probably the one most considered a classic. Um, and then from here, I have a good chunk of Helen Montgomery's books. I chose the ones I think are probably most considered classics, but I have a lot of them. So I have the first two Emily books. Um, I covered them myself because I didn't like the covers. Uh, so I have Emily of New Moon and Emily Climbs. Emily's Quest was not my favorite, so I end up not keeping it. So I only have the first two. Uh, space is of highest priority in my house at the moment. And then I have the wonderful Anne of Green Gables collection, all eight. I won't read off all the titles for you, but there you go. And to round out, I have The Little Prince by Antoine, and I'm not going to finish that or I'll watch it. I know I said it was done. I just found one more. This is A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, it's a little box with the miniature books with the poems in it. It's adorable. Next are my Shakespeare plays. I have As You Like It, and then the rest are in the Folger Shakespeare Library collection, which is my favorite. Uh, Love's Labor Lost, Measure for Measure, best play ever. Merchant of Venice, and Much Ado About Nothing, funniest play ever. Next are my old classics. Yes, all classics are old, but, um, well, I guess some classics are old. Some are, there's new classics too. I'm talking about actual old books that are also classics. So in here I have uh, Anthony Trollope's Dr. Thorne. This one was printed in 1927 and I picked it up for a pound 50 at a thrift shop in London. Best day ever. Um, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Harriet Beecher Stowe. A Tree Grows in Bro Brooklyn by Betty Smith. This one's fun because the back of the book actually has uh, Buy War Bonds promotion. Mrs. Gaskell's Cranford. This is from the 60s, I believe. It's in the uh, Everman's Library collection. Uh, the Best Short Stories of O. Henry. Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott. Such a, such a pretty cover. And then I do have, this kind of also falls into Shakespeare, but I do have a really beautiful copy of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, this one was printed, I'm scared, 1901. So this one's very fun. Running out the collection, The Miscellaneous. This is a very discombobulated deck, so I'm just gonna run through them. Um, John Steinbeck's Of Mice of Men, The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orsi, Great Expectations, Charles Dickens, again, didn't like the cover, made my own. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This one's fun because it's the um, replica of the original. So if you saw Man Who Invented Christmas, at the end of the movie, you see this actual book, which is really, really fun. Ah, got stuck. Then I have Villette by Charlotte Bronte. I love this cover. It's so pretty. Normally I stick to more vintagey things, but this one's just gorgeous. And Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. Then I have a, some more modern classics. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, one of my favorite books ever. A Scott Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby. William Faulkner's The Sound and the Fury. And buried probably at the bottom, yeah, right where I can't get it, of course, I also have William Faulkner's Light in August. E.M. Forster's A Room with a View, as well as Passage to India. This one's secondhand, so kind of long part, but I love this copy. This is so pretty with the painting on the front. Beowulf, Far from the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This is one of the um, Persephone books editions, which are so fun. They also have really unique end papers, um, and each book has its own. So this one is Miss Bunkle's book by D.E. Stevenson. I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days. This is a collection of Oscar Wilde, so it's got importance of being earnest. Um, 
ideal husband and uh, picture of Dorian Gray. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. George Eliot's Middlemarch. This thing is huge. I got to read this last summer for a study abroad program. I did have to skip, I think, about 150 pages, like, interspersed, and I'd read synopsis to catch up, so I wasn't behind in class, but I did read the last page, <laughs> so I made it through in some way. Um, T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets, a book of poetry that I adore, as well as Eliot's Selected Poems. Um, this is literally, he selected these poems. This was his book. That's what he titled it. I also have Tolkien's gorgeous collection, uh, Hobbit and All Three Lord of the Rings. I love these editions. Um, they are so beautiful. Here's the, the Fellowship of the Ring one. It's um, like engraved in the leather. And then on the, in the front part, it has like the, the writing and all of that. I believe the front of the Hobbit has a map. Yeah, the front of the Hobbit is a map. They're just gorgeous books. To round out my collection, I have selected poems of W.H. Auden and the complete poems of Emily Dickinson. I also found a few more buried in the corner of my room that I forgot, so they don't they fit into previous categories, but uh, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, two of the, these are the uh, rose years of the Little House books, but we have the whole collection of them downstairs. My, they're technically my mom's, but we do have those. And Pippi Longstocking, Astrid Lindgren. So those are... I buried in books. Those are my classics. I believe last time I counted it was about 95. Definitely have not read all of them. Um, I can do another, I can tag in the post which ones of these I've read so you can get an idea of my ratio. I don't actually know my ratio of how much I've read, how many I have, but most of the time I don't buy a book unless I've read it, unless it's a classic, because I know nine times out of ten I'll probably enjoy it. So my classics collection keeps growing while the rest of my books stay pretty small. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for joining me. Have a great rest of your day. Happy reading!